Mikey! And we are the Spirit Squad! What's up guys? Well, we had a great night of wrestling in my opinion. I thought both shows were really good. Uh, Raw Impact, in my opinion, uh, did a great job. Uh, both shows had a what the fuck moment. Uh, the what the fuck moment on Raw was when they had the stars from the hot tub time machine hanging out in the jacuzzi, and then all of a sudden, big ass Mark Henry gets in there with them wearing a little ass Speedo. And then all of a sudden, Hornswoggle pops up from out of the water. It was like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? This show is getting a little creepy. But then, TNA tops that. <laughs> when Orlando Jordan descends from the rafters into the middle of the rain, wearing caution tape all over his body. And then he's like slithering all over the ring and then gets out and walks over to this couch where this guy and this girl are sitting it was another WTF moment I was like what the fuck am I watching is this wrestling or is this showtime cause I didn't really know but, uh, so, some things about Raw that I really liked. Well, we all know Jack Swagger won the Money in the Bank. So what does he do? He comes out on the first night after winning it and tries to cash it in. You see, at the very beginning of the show, Batista and John Cena are cutting a promo. And... Jack Swagger comes in with the briefcase, uh, knocks the living hell out of John Cena with it a few times. He thinks he has the upper advantage, so he keeps calling for a ref to come out. Come on out, I want to cash it in. And then all of a sudden, John Cena gets back up, gets the upper hand, and then Jack Swagger's like, nah, on second thought, I don't think so. So I thought that was pretty cool. I was kind of hoping something like that would happen. I was hoping that he would cash it in and maybe win the belt, but he did try to cash it in, so, you know, he gets points for that, no doubt. Uh, another great thing, we got to see a Legends Lumberjack match, uh, a match between Christian and Ted DiBiase Jr., and we had a freaking awesome amount of legends. We had the Million Dollar Man, IRS, Arn Anderson, Nick Bockwinkle, uh, Tony Gurria, Rowdy Piper, Sergeant Slaughter, Ricky Steamboat, Jerry Lawler, and Pat Patterson all surrounding the ring. And we got to see Christian and Ted DiBiase go at it. Christian wins the match and then DiBiase is really pissed and his father comes in and he kind of gives his father a little shove and, a, and he gives him a what the hell look. I was like, okay, this might be going somewhere. And uh, I kind of hope it does. Uh, I think it would make for great TV. So Triple H is trying to come out and bid farewell to Shawn Michaels. He uh, He's talking about all the good times they had. And then out of nowhere, Sheamus, with lead pipe in hand, blindsides him. I mean, knocks the shit out of him. And messes up his little moment and uh, I thought it was great um, I think it's great that they're continuing the storylines continuing these feuds and uh, you know I hope that this feud actually ends up being a great one I thought they had a pretty good match of Mania and I'm thinking they could have you know more great matches so probably my favorite moment of the night Bret Hart comes out talks about uh, the match he had with Vince last night, and Miz, well, Show Miz comes out. Miz is talking about how Bret Hart has wasted a lot of his time because that's time that the Miz could have had instead of Bret Hart, and uh, basically going on to say, how can you be a 
be proud of yourself for having a 25 on one handicap match. And then all of a sudden the Hart Dynasty comes up, they got Bret Hart's back, and then a match is made, non-title, for the non-title match, the Hart Dynasty versus Show Miz. And I thought it was great. Um, we're getting to see Bret Hart and the Hart Dynasty uh, kind of work together. And the Hart Dynasty did win this match. Uh, I'm thinking that the Hart Dynasty are going to be future tag team champions without a doubt. Especially with Bret Hart being in the mix. Uh, I know Bret Hart doesn't have much longer left on his contract. But I'm sure somewhere he put in his contract that he wanted to see the Hart Dynasty as champions. And I really hope it happens. But, uh, so, actually, they get counted out, the show Miz does, because Big Show's fed up. He's tired of the Miz. He got a little fed up with him tonight. So he grabs the Miz, and they just leave. <laughs> and uh, they get counted out. Uh, now, main event was Jack Swagger and Batista against John Cena and a partner of his choice. And... Who did John Cena pick? None other than Randy Orton. So, I'm guessing this is Randy Orton's official face turn. Because you have the face of the company and the, fa and, and the good guy of the company uh, picking Randy Orton as, as his partner. And, uh, you know, the match was good. And... Uh, John Cena and Randy Orton win, and uh, I'm guessing, you know, Randy Orton's getting major pops. Why not turn him face, you know? Uh, it's hard for the crowd to boo this guy because they're really enjoying him. And, yeah, you know, Raw didn't have any matches, but uh, they did have, uh, you know, they had three matches. But then we got to see the farewell, Shawn Michaels, very heartfelt, touching, teary-eyed moments. Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, Undertaker came out tipped his hat to him and Triple H at the very end came out they embraced each other you know he had a hell of a career throughout the whole night they kept showing flashbacks uh, flashbacks of when he threw Marty Jannetty through the barbershop window uh, Wrestlemania 10 ladder match uh, Wrestlemania 12 Iron Man match Wrestlemania 25 match with The Undertaker it just kept showing a lot of great moments and uh, I thought it was a great Raw so from there, we get to see TNA. I thought TNA did a good job. We got to see the band come out with Bubba the Love Douche. And uh, everybody hates Bubba, and it shows in the crowd. They hate him. So Bubba's with the band now, and they're talking trash. And uh, they basically want to apologize. Or Kevin Nash wants to apologize to Eric Young. He wants Eric Young to join the band. He doesn't want to have anything to do with that. So we get the match, and that's the main event. Uh, now... TNA had a lot of matches. They had six matches total. We got to see our first ever First Blood Knockouts match. I'm so glad to see uh, Knockouts or women wrestle in TNA because women wrestling in TNA is fantastic. And the match was pretty good. Tara wins. Stephanie gets her head knocked off with the toolbox and uh, she ends up bleeding uh, on the top of her head. Jeff Jarrett and AJ Styles have a pretty good match. AJ Styles gets to win. Um, via a low blow. thought that was pretty good. Flack Machizo, uh, he beats Beer Money in a handicap match. Desmond Wolf beats the Pope. Uh, Kurt Angle cuts a great promo with Mr. Anderson. They're bantering back and forth. There's going to be a ladder match between those two next week on Impact. And then we get to see the band take on RVD, Jeff Hardy, Eric Young in a steel cage match. Very entertaining. RVD, Hardy, and Eric Young get the win. Eric Young is not even in the match, pretty much. He gets locked out of the cage. At the very end, he climbs to the top of the cage, does the elbow drop on six pack. He gets the win. Very exciting. Uh, another match was Kazarian and Shannon Moore beating Kendrick and Doug Williams. X Division at its finest. And, you know, the Pope also cuts a really great promo. And uh, Chelsea comes out to try to seduce them, to kind of distract them. And they're getting very non-PG in their promo. And the Pope tries to sneak up behind them, but the Pope, he knows what's going on. And he uh, he uh, attacks the, the wolf before uh, the wolf can attack him. So I thought that was very entertaining. And uh, that's my, uh, 
Monday Night Review. Let me know what you guys think. What did you like? What did you dislike? Let me know in the comments below. This is Golden. This is out.